Well, it certainly looks brighter now than it did a year ago. Uh, and this is due primarily to declining interest rates, which uh, are beginning to have an effect on the mortgage market. Money is more available, and it's uh, cheaper than it was a year ago. And both the availability and, and cost uh, have a very great impact on home building. So that uh, uh, that plus uh, a number of uh, federal programs designed to stimulate housing programs, uh, housing construction, residential uh, construction of all types, uh, makes for a very much brighter outlook this year than was true a year ago. This insert, which was almost a year in preparation, will appear in Fort Worth and Tarrant County newspapers this coming Sunday. It indicates various areas of the city, maps for those areas, and fallout shelters in those areas. I talked to Fort Worth Tarrant County Civil Defense Coordinator Robert Lord and asked him how Fort Worth stands, how many people can we save? We have located an identified shelter for about 83% of the population in Tarrant County. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the 17% represents uh, considerably over 100,000 people. This is what worries us. Uh, there are areas in Tarrant County that are deficient, that do not have shelter. Uh, this worries us, but we feel it's our responsibility to explain to the public of Tarrant County that there is a lot of shelter, but uh, not nearly enough. Well, you say you've got shelter for 83%. Now, is that a theoretical figure? No, that's a, that's a surveyed figure by professional engineers. This means that buildings are in the county that would pro provide uh, adequate shelter from gamma radiation for 83% of the population. All is not yet perfect. Some of the shelters are not in convenient areas of the city, and some of them are not equipped with food, drinking water, and other supplies for survival. But it is a start and it is an ongoing program. Mr. Lord advises that families who receive this shelter plan cut it out and save it, along with other important papers. Saving this could save your life. J. Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth.
the symbolic signing of a contract between Lone Star Gas Company and the Dallas-Fort Worth Regional Airport was held this morning in the cold, cold temperatures at the proposed Dallas-Fort Worth Regional Airport site. Signing for Lone Star Gas Company was Mr. George Peck, Vice President of the Corporation. Signing for the Dallas-Fort Worth Regional Airport was the Director, Thomas Sullivan. It is with great pleasure that I sign a five-year contract to serve gas to the great regional airport. Well, that's, that's very great. In behalf of the airport board, I want to say that we're happy to have you on board. Another one of the, another one of the providers of uh, facilities and utilities for this great facility. Thank you very much. Thank you. By the terms of the regional airport's contract, gas delivery is expected to begin in June of 1973. Prior to delivery, Lone Star will install approximately 10 miles of gas distribution pipeline needed to serve this new facility. According to Mr. Peck, Lone Star will provide the regional airport with natural gas for cooling, heating, and domestic hot water applications. It's estimated that the airport will require approximately 2.17 billion cubic feet of gas per year. During 1970, Lone Star supplied Dallas's Love Field with 0.30 billion cubic feet of gas, only one-seventh of the regional airport's anticipated annual consumption. With the temperatures below freezing, we could have used some of that gas today. Jerry Park, Channel 8 News on the Move, Dallas-Fort Worth Regional Airport proposed site. Early in December, we received bids on five schools to be air-conditioned. One of them was within budget and four were over budget. Since that time, the building committee and the administration has been meeting with various uh, segments, engineers, contractors, as well as with the Citizens Advisory Committee, which recommended this program to the Board of Education. It is now apparent that uh, with some adjustments in the specifications, all of the buildings could be brought in within budget, and we pr expect to recommend to the board on January 27th that the bids uh, can be accepted or they will have to be put out for rebid in accordance with new specifications. Hopefully, there will be no delay from that point on in the entire program as outlined. January 15, 1971, they've agreed to terminate all business. This, this order was entered into by consent uh, of Ling and Company and Michael Ling. And in it, they did not admit the allegations of the uh, order for proceedings, but consented to the findings contained in the order. What were those allegations? Basically, they involved uh, allegations of the registration and anti-fraud provisions of the Securities Act of 1933 and the Securities Exchange Act of 1934.
I have decided that for the people of Texas and for Ben Barnes both, that I should put politics aside and put first priority first, which is being a good lieutenant governor. So I am going to delay any political announcement about 1972 until the session work of the 62nd legislature has been completed. Did the Connolly appointment or any other political considerations help you decide this? Not the Connolly appointment uh, in itself, but I think uh, we all realize, uh, and perhaps the Connolly appointment pointed out to us, that these are volatile political times that uh, we live in. It's now some 18 months until the next primary. Many things can happen during that time, and of course uh, many things must happen if Texas is going to continue to, to operate uh, under a stable state government as we've had in the past. And so I think it would uh, not only be premature, but uh, rather than adding to the political stability of the state, if I made a political announcement, I think it would take away from uh, our stability that we've enjoyed in the past in Texas. 